<laughs> First off, the thing about humor is ultimately it's subjective. What you find funny, the person next to you won't find funny, and the person next to you might find half funny. And the thing is, is every one of you is, is right. It's your sense of humor. And don't let anybody ever take it away from you. And if they try to get a stick and, and just beat them behind the leg, and then, you know, and kick them in the stomach. I'd listen to your lecture, and, you, you know, as much as you guys try, it's science can't uh, deal with comedy. So if you don't do what we did to understand comedy, but what do you do? You go tell jokes. <laughs> Why was Helen Keller such a bad driver? Because she was a woman. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> I was asked to go to a water park, and I didn't want to turn down the suggestion without presenting an alternative, so I was like, okay, we could go to a water park, or... They set something up. I can find 50 strangers to just pee on you. You know, uh, women are crazy these days. By definition, a joke has to have... An, uh, a surprise at the end, an unexpected end. Uh, but the b more bizarre, the more interesting, the more it's a complete 90 degree turn from where we were going, the happier I am. Guy's in a bar, good place for a joke, all right? And uh, he's, with a, he, he's, he's, he's drinking and he sees a, a nice looking lady and he rolls over to her and he says, listen, he says, I live near here and I, I was taking a look at you. You look kind of nice. I wonder, would you be interested in us uh, getting out of here, going back to my place? Uh, she said, yeah, yeah, okay. He says, but I want you to know, he says, I want to do something kinky. And she says, hey, fine by me. So they leave the bar and they go to his place. They get in there and they have sex and they have it in a very conventional and ordinary way. And when it's finished, she says, uh, "She said that was that was great, but I thought you wanted to do something kinky." He said, "I did. I in your purse." <laughs> you know, now that's a great joke. Uh, this is the question. I hate this question, so I'm. It's thrilling. Capricorn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the first question I've got is, what was the what, what's the first joke you remember? Uh, the first joke ever. I, d I don't know. I'm sure it was something my father started, and it took him too long to finish it, and I don't remember it. Uh, two Germans walked into a Polish bar. Now, this is a long pol red cherry wood before Hitler invaded. He hadn't gotten there yet, but it was right there on paper. I mean, Churchill knew it. He said something, but that damn Chamberlain couldn't figure it out. Okay, I don't even know what the joke's about anymore, Dad. I don't want to blow this. I Listen, I am right now representing the entire History Channel audience. <laughs> I know, you really I are. Am, and it's, I am. It's scary. Now... Uh, how did you fight the battle of not dressing up as Mark Twain? I mean, that would have added a, a touch of class to this. You could be Mark Twain, I could be like W.C. Fields or something like that. I don't know. I think you have to look back um, throughout history to see some of the great jokes. Um, and some of them have um, been on us, as we say. And I've tried to kick coffee, but it's f hard, man. <laughs> when they're Starbucks every two feet, and then they're like going, psst, psst. Yo, brother, you need a latte. <laughs> You want a nice mocha latte? <laughs> I mix it up with sugar and <laughs> Plus, with free internet. I mean, all you want to do is the only thing they need now is a laptop dancer. You know, some girl just like a. <laughs> so, you're here for your coffee? <laughs> Breaking into this business as a woman, what was that like? I did not know that half of the population thinks women aren't funny. I was not given this information, I had no idea. And then the more successful I become, the more people come up to me after a show and go, you know, usually I hate women comics. But you were hilarious. And I'm like, really? So all these years I've been walking up on stage in a total hole? The notion that chicks aren't as funny is ridiculous and comes from men who aren't as funny. What? I enjoy dispelling the myth. And I hope that I do. And I try to. And it's one of my favorite things to hear. Hey, you're funny. And you have that vagina. The jokes I like doing the best are when they hit home with a man. And he gets it. And he says to his wife, that's you. She's telling what you need to hear. There's no hidden agenda with a man. You know when he's sitting in the lounger and he's staring off to space for two hours and you say, what are you thinking about? And he says, nothing. You know what he's thinking about? Not a damn thing. That man just watched the clock go from six to eight. Look, if you ever fight with your wife, this is what I do, okay? 12 words, works every time. You are right. I am wrong. I love you honey you win and you squash it it's over they'll go <laughs> grab her in your arms take her into the bedroom and cuddle go to sleep like a team like a like a coalition 
You go to sleep together, happy. She won. And that night while she's sleeping, cut her hair. So you know you won. A lot of women don't want to go on the road. So that probably is part of the reason. Because also, like, guys think it's fun. Like, oh, I'll go town to town and have sex with the waitresses. What am I going to do? Like, sleep with the dishwasher? Hey, hey, Frankie. Huh? How's that community college working out? It's definitely harder for a woman on the road. And guys will never admit this. But what do they know? Because when you get heckled as a woman, it's never just you suck. It's you suck and show me your jugs combined. And that just doesn't happen to guys. Nobody's going to heckle them and say, show me your balls. Because nobody wants to see them. These toys are all safe. These toys are totally safe. Here, yeah, of course they have some strict nine. How do you expect toys to stay together without strict nine? Don't give it to a two-year-old. It's made by a two-year-old. You should not give it to a two-year-old. No, that should offend people. Have to. This man walks into an elevator, and a woman says to him, can I smell your balls? And he says, no. And she goes, well, then it must be your feet. <laughs> can we do a close-up on those? <laughs> How about that? Yeah, that's funny. That's all I got. I think comedy is at its best when you have something painful and you poke a stick at it. As of this girl, we were getting hot and heavy. I was rubbing her breasts in a very provocative fashion. And when I went to take off her top, she goes, whoa. We better stop before this gets out of hand, huh? And I was like, yeah. My computer's spell checker hates Leonard Skinner. My onstage persona is, I'd say around 25% fact, 25% fiction, 50% what I was like in high school. Growing up, I was, I was a very angry child. I only own two folders. One of them is labeled Plots to Destroy the World. The other one is labeled Teen Angst Poetry. But it doesn't contain Teen Angst Poetry. It contains Plots to Destroy the World! All the masks come off. It's a moment of complete vulnerability. It's a Zen moment. And in the primitive cultures, the job of the trickster was to trick the gods into laughing because it was believed that only during the moment of laugh laughter, could they communicate correctly with the gods? Creationists, the right-wing Christians, believe every word Genesis says. I don't even think Phil Collins is a good drummer. And that's the moment that an idea can get in. I don't go out selling ideas, but I know that when people laugh, their guard goes down. I've never been more unhappy with anything <laughs> in my life than this incredible moment here. What do you think laughter is? What do I think laughter is? Yeah. What do I think crying is? You're going to get a different sound, a different syllable, but you're going to get pretty much the same, same thing. We are at a peak of emotion where words don't do it for us. We've been moved off our asses from a calmness from a gentle way of life. We just lit a yard site the other night for a boy we lost a long time ago, just before his bar mitzvah. And I said the Kaddish, the mourner's prayer. Well, laughter did not come, but something came. We've been moved out of the doldrums, moved out of the regularity of our lives. When you cry, when you laugh, you've been moved to an extreme. And thank God for those moments in our lives. That's how do I tell you what laughter is. In any search for the Holy Grail, the journey itself is the end. So keep looking for comedy in theaters, on TV, and in your local comedy club. You've just watched two hours of dysfunctional misfits who are counting on you. They'll keep trying. They have nothing else. <laughs>